Hello, my name is Giles Booth. I'm the Education Content Manager for the Microbit Educational Foundation. We create free educational materials and tools for teachers and students. I'm a teacher and before working for Microbit I taught in both primary and secondary schools and I'm here to share with you how the fundamentals of computing and electronics are relevant to teaching design and technology and how the BBC Microbit can help. If you teach in a UK school, it's very likely your school already has microbits. More on this later. The BBC Microbit is a really simple tool that helps you to teach the technical knowledge and skills section of the design and technology curriculum with ease, creativity and enjoyment. You can get hands on with prototyping straight away. Students love it and independent evaluations demonstrate that learning with the microbit raises student and teacher confidence when using technology in the classroom. The BBC microbit is a microcontroller, a tiny computer packaged on a board with buttons, LEDs and sensors that you program using simple blocks on a computer, phone or tablet. Students can create real working projects they can hold in their hands in seconds. You can use the microbit to make real working electronic products, prototype more complex ideas or make connected systems using radio. Simple projects like a step counter, name badge or dice can be used as starting points. The microbit makes it simple to teach the control systems part of the technical knowledge Key Stage 3 design and technology curriculum with its built-in sensors and simple block coding. The microbit is perfect for getting your students quickly building projects that use inputs like buttons, sensors for temperature, light and movement, as well as outputs. It's perfect for prototyping the way microcontrollers are used in real products. For example, in this BT Young Pioneer Award winner in 2018, students created a prototype microbit running water alarm, which is now being turned into a real product. So let's have a look at the microbit in a bit more detail. It's really simple to get started with the BBC Microbit. You just need a microbit, a micro USB cable and a computer. The microbit is a piece of hardware, a tiny pocket sized computer. To make it work, you have to tell it what to do by writing a computer program. Programs are called software. The micro USB cable is used to transfer the program onto the microbit. Let's have a look at it. On one side of the microbit, you will see 25 LEDs arranged as a square to make a simple display. There are also two input buttons, button A and button B. On the other side, you will see a reset button and a small socket to plug in a battery pack. We explore the processor and other features in further videos in this series. The microbit can only do what you tell it to do. So the first thing you need to do is write a program. You can use different programming languages to do this. For example, MakeCode, which works as a block and text editor, or the Python text-based editor. For beginners, MakeCode is a good place to start. We've selected some simple projects to help you. Choose one to get started. The BBC Microbit was born as a response to changes in the curriculum in England in 2014. The microbit was designed by technologists and educationalists to support children's learning in a changing world. In 2016, as part of the BBC Make It Digital scheme, one million microbits were given for free to UK Year 7 students. And if you teach in a UK secondary school, your school probably has class sets of microbits, even if you don't know it. It's our job at the Microbit Educational Foundation to support teachers and students all over the world. Today, more than 25 million children are learning digital skills worldwide with the BBC Microbit. Let's have a look at the features of the Microbit. On the front, there's a 5x5 matrix of LED lights that can be used to show words, numbers and simple pictures. The LED display also works as a light sensor and there are two push buttons for input. Pins on the edge connector allow you to connect headphones, simple electronics and use touch sensors. Around the back you'll see connections for a battery pack and USB for power and programming. 
It has many of the same sensors found on a mobile phone. An accelerometer to measure forces and detect which way up it is, a compass which can find magnetic north but also detect when magnets are near, and a radio antenna for simple wireless communication between microbits and Bluetooth to allow coding from a tablet or phone instead of a computer. The processor can also measure temperature. The simulator in the online code editor means students don't even need a microbit to begin working on their prototypes. But physical computing best engages learners when the microbit is held in your hand. Here are some simple projects from our site that show how the microbit's built-in features teach how control systems work. First in a project to prototype automatic lighting that keeps sea turtle hatchlings safe. You might know that sea turtles are an endangered species. What you may not know is that sea turtle hatchlings use moonlight to navigate their way to the sea after they're born and some beach lighting can stop them being able to do this. This is where your microbit can help because you can create a prototype of a low power red LED beach light that can be used for lighting on beach paths which is also safe for sea turtles. The program uses the built-in light sensor to detect if it's dusk and then turn on the LED display to show a turtle for fun and to remind people to look out for the hatchlings and it stays on until dawn. Let's open the Make Code Editor and write the program. To make our prototype beach light that's safe for sea turtles, let's get a new Make Code project, get rid of on start, but keep forever because we want to keep checking the light level. We're going to use two logic blocks here. The first one we're going to use is if then else and we're going to add another logic block, one of the comparisons. So drag this hexagonal block and drop it on top of true and into that we're going to add one of the inputs. So scroll down and find light level and drop that in the first slot. Now we want something to happen if the light level is below a certain amount. We're going to try 100 to start with. We might want to change that when we get it on our real micro bit. And if the light level falls below 100, it's going dark. It's dusk. So we want to light up our light with the LEDs showing the picture of a turtle. This will remind us that turtle hatchlings might be about and we need to look out for them. And also it'll help guide our way and help keep the turtles safe. We'll add one more block here from the basic category, the clear screen. So if the light level is less than 100, it's going to light up and show a turtle on the LED display. Otherwise, it's going to show nothing at all. The display will be clear. And we can test that out in the simulator using this slider. If we slide it below 100, we should see the LEDs light up and our turtles are safe. An interesting fact about sea turtles is that they use the Earth's magnetic field to guide them at sea. And female sea turtles find their way back to their own birthplace to lay eggs using the Earth's magnetic field as well. You can use your microbit to find magnetic north as well using the inbuilt magnetometer or compass. So you can find magnetic north just like a sea turtle. Have a look on the microbit website for some of our compass projects. The next project uses the microbit's accelerometer to make a simple alarm. You can turn your BBC microbit into a handy water bottle alarm so you can tell if your water bottle has been tilted since you left it, which might suggest someone else has drunk from it. You can write a program to show a heart when your bottle is upright and it's still safe to drink from, and then show a warning cross when a tilt is detected by the accelerometer, which stays there until you reset it and keeps your water bottle safe. So let's open the Make Code Editor and write our code. To make my water bottle alarm, I've got a fresh Make Code project. Let's get rid of the forever block, but we're going to keep the on start block. And I'm going to add to that the show icon block with the heart so that when we plug the battery pack into our micro bit, a heart will appear on the LED display. To sense whether someone's picked up our water bottle and maybe drunk from it, we can use the on shake block. The on shake block takes readings from the micro bits built in accelerometer. And as well as detecting whether it's been shaken, it can tell which way up your micro bit is and also whether it's been tilted left or right. I'm going to pick tilt right and then I'm going to copy the show icon block. If I right click on it and choose duplicate from the list, that makes a copy of the icon block. 
I'll drop it in there and change the heart to a cross. Now what this means is that when someone picks up our micro bit, we should now see a cross appear when the micro bit is tilted, when it's sensed by the micro bit's accelerometer. And we can't reset it without unplugging the battery pack or pressing the reset button on the back of the micro bit. So we should know if someone's been drinking from our water bottle. Experiment with different triggers from the accelerometer to make something happen on your micro bit and see if you can add a way of resetting the micro bit back to the heart, perhaps by pressing a button or doing something else. You can use magnets in your projects too as control inputs, such as in this door alarm project. You can create an alarm for your room door using your BBC microbit and a simple magnet. Your microbit has a built-in compass sensor called a magnetometer that measures magnetic fields. So you can fix the magnet to the corner of your door and then write a program to use the magnetometer to sense the strength of the magnetic field. So when the door's closed and your micro bit is close to the magnet, the strength of the field detected by the magnetometer is strong. But if someone opens the door, the strength of the magnetic field weakens. When it falls below a certain level, your micro bit can show you that someone has been in your room. Now let's open a new make code project and get coding. To make my door alarm, I've got a new make code project. Let's get rid of the on start block, but we're going to keep the forever block because we're going to keep checking the magnetic field measured by the micro bits magnetometer, its compass. Go to logic and find the if block and drag that in. And also in logic, you'll find the comparison block. So get that hexagonal block and drop it on top of true. Then if we go to input and click on more, you'll find a block called magnetic force. Drop it in the first hole in the comparison block and we're going to change it so it measures the overall strength of the magnetic force. Your micro bits magnetometer can measure magnetic force in different dimensions but we're just interested in just how strong it is overall. And um, We're going to pop a number in here that we might need to change later but I'm just going to pick 200 for the moment. It measures the strength of magnetic field in a unit called micro teslas and I'm going to try 200 to start with. If the magnetic field falls below 200 micro teslas, I'm going to show an angry face because what that will mean is the magnet has gone away from my micro bit, somebody's opened the door and uh, we want to know someone's been in the room so it's going to show an angry face on the display. How do I know what number to pick for the magnetic force? How do I know how strong my magnet is? Well, we're going to do something to sort that out. So if we go to input, drag in on button A press and we'll add a show number block and let's copy the magnetic force block if I right click on it duplicate and drag it in here and drop it there what this means now is that when I press button A I can measure the amount of magnetic force measured by my micro bit I can see it on the display so we're ready to try this out now it doesn't work in the simulator so we're going to need to put this on a real micro bit so uh, I'm going to call it door alarm and I'm going to download the hex file and transfer it to my micro bit. The first time you run a program on your micro bit that uses the compass, you'll see a message scroll across the screen saying tilt to fill screen. This is to calibrate the magnetometer or the compass on your micro bit to make sure it's working properly. Once the message has scrolled across saying tilt to fill screen, you just play a little game. Tilt your micro bit around until you can fill every LED light. Every LED light will light up on the screen and when you've done them all, you'll get a smiley face and your program will run. Affix the micro bit and the battery pack to the door frame using something like Bluetack and put the magnet on the door itself very close to it. Have a look on the back of your micro bit board and see where the compass is. You need to make sure the magnet is close to the compass chip on the back of your micro bit. Now we can calibrate it. With the door closed, press button A and get a reading of the magnetic field strength. In my case, it's around 453 micro teslas. I'm then going to open the door and press button A again and take a reading with the door open. It's 129 micro teslas now. It can still measure some magnetism. Don't forget the earth is magnetic and there are other things probably in my house that are magnetic as well. So the micro bit's still picking up some magnetic field. So my number of 200 should work pretty well. If it's 
more than 200, it means the door is shut, which sounds likely because with the door shut, I had 453 micro Teslas. If it's below 200, that probably means someone's opened the door. In this case, I know that when my door is open, I have 129 micro Teslas. So that should work OK now. I should be able to tell when someone opened my door and an angry face will appear on my micro bit display and I'll know that somebody has been in my room. There are lots of things you could do to this project to augment it. You could perhaps add a delay to give yourself some time to get out of the room. Remember, if you need to reset it, you can just press button A to show the magnetic force again, and that will clear the angry face off the display on your micro bit. Uh, maybe you could add an audible alarm as well. You could add a music block so that when somebody opens your door, it makes an audible sound to warn you that somebody has been inside your room. There are all sorts of ways you could modify this project. Adding remote sensors is easy using the Microbits radio function. You could build a whole prototype wireless alarm system in your classroom, reacting to doors opening, lights being turned on, make simple pressure pads or respond when things are moved. Other projects like the Reaction Game use simple switches made from tin foil and cardboard to add physical controllers to a game, making it more accessible and fun. There's huge scope here for getting your students to design and make controllers and cases for microbit projects. The microbit is supported by free code editors and the microbit.org website. We have videos and guides to introduce the device to you and your students with an in-depth user guide when you're ready to find out more. Our school page has links to guides to support you if you need to teach remotely. We have over 60 quick Make It Code It projects with many video guides and learning relevant to the technical knowledge part of the England Key Stage 3 Design and Technology curriculum. There are 18 longer units of work, including design challenges such as Healthy Oceans, with many links to the Design and Technology curriculum. All of these units can be downloaded as Word documents and PowerPoints so you can modify them to suit your needs. Our two main editors are Make Code Blocks, which is very simple to start with, and Python text-based coding for more advanced students. Microbit Classroom allows you to run and manage live coding sessions, sharing code with students, capturing their work for assessment, and resuming a whole class another time at the click of a button. We also offer free support. Search our knowledge base or create a support ticket to contact real human beings who are experts on the microbit. So I hope you've seen that the microbit is an inexpensive, simple way to teach electronics, control systems and embedding computing in your teaching. As I mentioned at the beginning, your school probably already has class sets of microbits from the 2016 national giveaway. So have a chat to your colleagues teaching computing in ICT. Perhaps they've got class sets of microbits at the back of a cupboard somewhere and see if you can put them to use in your classroom.